Hello everybody. This is the first video I've made on this kind of thing. And in front of me here, well I mean, let me go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Zach. Uh, a lot of you people have talked to me plenty of times on the uh, Facebook groups and stuff like that. Um, I collect and refurbish KitchenAids and other stand mixers. And in front of me here are KitchenAid's three most popular choices for bowl lift mixers. Over here we have the older design. This is basically the K5. The K5 started in the 1950s, approximately 1950s. It was always known as like the, uh, the bigger, more heavy-duty model, I guess you could say. This one is from 1988. It's a five-quart machine, 325 watts. This one came out right after Hobart sold KitchenAid to Whirlpool. And after refurbishing this one, it has a lot of what I would call Hobart quality parts in it. And there's a few little instances on here where you can still see that it has some <clears throat> pretty solid Hobart DNA in it. I know it's hard to see, but up under here, there is no screw. Most of these have a screw right about here to adjust for the bowl height and the uh, beater height. And this one does not have that. There's actually nothing here. If you need to make that um, adjustment, you actually have to go in, take the base off, go into the, uh, the arm right here and adjust the spring that moves your bowl up and down. But anyway, this is known as the KSM-5. This was this model came out in probably like 1987 and went on through the early 90s. Then after that it became KSM 55 with a bunch of different digits after it depending upon the color. This is Admiral Gray and it's also the Pro line. In approximately that time, this is around the time they first started making some other colors besides white vintage yellow green for the KitchenAids. William Sonoma was a, uh, the Pro line and the Imperial Grey was a William Sonoma special edition for, you know, early 90s, late 80s. That's when you found this. This would have been the top of the line. Nowadays you go in, this model's the top of the line, the seven quart. The, uh, this is one of my favorites. It's just the look, feel, sound, everything about it is just, it's it just works, you know? And the awesome thing about this older style, and you see this on the modern day artisans as well, these little black caps on the sides, these are actually the covers that hold the motor brushes and their springs. That is how easy that is to repair. Both of these springs and brushes are internal and you'd have to disassemble the motor to service them and chances are you're not going to be replacing those because something else is going to break before then. This one has new springs and brushes on the motor. All of the grease has been removed, everything's been cleaned out and completely redone. Everything's been cleaned as well as I could get it. The older models tend to like to leak right around here and in fact on this one, depending upon the light, I could not get all of that brown out right around here, so you can see where it came to me pretty leaky and messy. But it's definitely one of my favorites. This is the kind that I grew up with, so the noise, the sound of the motor, everything is just very recognizable. These are all 10-speed machines. This is the last one. This is the only model here to have a um, like an actual physical uh, speed governor assembly back here. These two have electronic speed control that's basically a computer circuit board. So, that's, it's all modular and very easy to repair, or you know, you wouldn't repair it, you'd just replace the board. But this one can actually be tuned to different speeds, and on speed one or stir, all of these need to be set so that you have one second between revolutions of this right here, and this one's perfect in that. But, yeah. On the uh, original 5-quart, you've got three attachments. This is your J-shaped dough hook. And this is actually a Hobart-style dough hook, from what I understand. The uh, Whirlpool style was more of a... Later on, it was a spiral, like these, but the Whirlpool design was more of a C, and you're probably familiar 
with what I'm talking about. It looked more like that. But I tell you, this original design for the K5 or KSM5, which is more, you know, I, I thought it was a pirate hook, you know, when I first started playing with these things. It's very efficient. I still use this 30-year-old machine to make a two-loaf bread recipe occasionally. And it doesn't slow down, it doesn't make a fuss, but this is very, very good at doing dough. And then you have the standard five-quart coated flat beater. This one has some age on it, and it's missing one little piece of the coating, but also a very, very efficient design. Now, something else I like about the older models, and some of the newer ones, like this one, which I'll get to in a little while, this wire whip actually has, it's fully stainless steel. Now, versus the newer ones that have a burnished metal base, which cannot be put in the dishwasher, like this one here that goes with the Pro 600, if you put this in the dishwasher, I, I believe it's chemicals that have to do with dishwashing detergent will actually cause this to start to flake and get real nasty. You'll have to spend hours wiping that off and making it clean again. What I like about the older Hobart style models your wire whip was fully stainless steel, and if you see the base here, this is actually solid stainless steel. This can be thrown in the dishwasher, you can do whatever you want with it, it's not going to get nasty on you. It's also very, it's very sturdy, it's very well made, but that was your standard attachment line that would come with your KSM-5, later on the, you know, the Pro 500. You can still buy this exact model in stores or online. It, today it's called the Pro 500 or Professional 500, not the Pro 5 Plus, which is more like this one, but with a five quart bowl, if that makes any sense. It's also very loud. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, you can still get this one. Today it's called the Pro 500. It looks exactly the same as it does here nowadays and um, comes in lots of different colors. I don't think, I haven't seen an Imperial Gray one in a long time, but. It no longer says Proline on the side, it says Pro 500. So if you're interested in an older model like this, it's just, it's a tried and true design with a, um, a gearbox that is serviceable. There's, every gear in here is replaceable. There is one, what you would call, I think it's called enforced, reinforced plastic or nylon. One of the gears in here is a nylon gear and it's designed to shred or break should the machine get jammed up hard, as in, e even if you get a hand in here or a child gets a hand in here, it's designed for not only safety but to protect the motor. That gear is extremely easy to replace. It doesn't fail if you're doing, a lot of people say that it can't handle bread dough and things like that. You're, you're putting too much in there or you're doing it in a fashion that is destroying the machine, so to speak. So the gear would not normally disintegrate when you're using it normally. But the gear is also very easy to replace. I think it's only like five, seven dollars or something online. <clears throat> and the entire assembly that the gear sits into is about twenty dollars. If you want to do, if you want to go that line, that's actually easier to repair. But yeah, that's your original KSM-5 or five quart KitchenAid bowl lift stand mixer. Moving on. Around 2007, correct me if I'm wrong here, KitchenAid wanted to kind of catch up with, um, you know, what the kids are doing these days, so to speak. So they redesigned the bowl lift mixer. They came out with the Pro 600. This is a six quart machine. And this one is the Pro 600 Deluxe. What Deluxe means is it came with a glass bowl instead of the stainless steel. You know, pretty, everything. And the glass bowl has its own set of attachments. It also, some models actually came with the flex edge beater as well. And Pro 600 is 575 watts, and it has a modular setup on the inside here. There's a gearbox up at the front, and a 575 watt AC motor at the back. And then there's also a control board that controls your 10 speeds and your power to the motor. And everything in here is also replaceable. It's modular. It's just you drop in a new one if something breaks. But um, something I'm not very fond of this model, and a lot of people agree with me, it is very, very loud. There is something with this motor. It's not actually the gear case. A lot of people think that the noise is gears grinding, and it's, it's actually not. It's the AC motor making it. With the uh, Pro 600, the setup for the motor is a little bit different. 
on the Proline here, or the uh, Artisan or K5, the older models basically, the older design, you had a separate armature, which is the part that actually goes through the field coil, and that turns a gear. Every one of those parts was separate in here. In the Pro 600, it is one modular motor, it takes up maybe about this much space on the inside of the machine here, and it drives a shaft that comes into your gear case here at the front. And there's also, of course, uh, another worm gear up here to power your attachments that are underneath the little flip-up thing. Um, with the Pro 600, it has a good amount of torque, but I'll be honest, I'll go, well actually, let me go into another little thing about these, uh, about stand mixers in general and, you know, any appliance that advertises with a certain wattage when it comes to uh, watts. This is 325 watts. This is 575 watts. Now, the first thing you're going to think is this one is a lot more powerful or that it has a lot more torque. I'll be brutally honest with you. There are $1,000 mixers out there that are 1,000 watts or more. And then there are ones that are 250 watts. I've actually seen a 250 watt mixer make less fuss kneading bread dough than one with a huge wattage. Wattage is not the most important thing that you need to look at when you're researching these. It's more, it more has to do with the, not, not just the quality of the gearbox, but the transmission of the mixer itself. You can have a lower wattage machine, like this one's 325 watts. This, I'll be brutally honest, this one makes less fuss kneading bread dough than this machine does with almost, you know, with more than double the wattage, or about, you know, double the wattage, 575 watts. And I find that interesting. It all has to do with the design of the actual gear case here. So, and having all of these apart, this one I actually had to fix to get it into working shape. It's, it's a beautiful machine, I'll give it that. It's, um, but I will say, this is not, the Pro 600, Pro 600 Deluxe, they also make a Professional 600 design, which is another one that comes with the glass bowl. It, it looks like this. It just says design in fancy letters here. Um, it's not my favorite model, just because of the layout on the inside. I've, you know, taken, after having taken all three of these apart, as far as manufacturing quality, I love the old style. I love the way it's made. It's made to be serviced. It's not made to be thrown away. The uh, DC motor setup, which I'll get to in a little bit more detail here soon, is more robust than this one. The quality of the gears in the gear case on the Pro 600, the quality of the actual metal and the stamping of the gears just does not compare to what I've seen in the older models. And a lot of people have problems with gears getting chewed up or broken in this model. I understand why now that I've seen it. But I will tell you, if you can get over the noise that the motor makes on this one, it's not a bad machine. It has a nice capacity, it, you know, it can run all of your attachments just like any other KitchenAid. And it feels nice, you know, it comes in a lot of nice colors, it feels solid. Um, but it's just, it's just a matter of preference. I'm going to do a quick little sound test here. We're going to run each one of these on speed one so I can show you the difference in the sound that they make. The older model here, the uh, Modern Day Pro 500, or this is the KSM5, Speed one. Probably a noise that lots of people are used to. This is what they have sounded like for a long time. That's stir speed or speed one. Now, listen to the difference on how noisy this is stir speed on the Pro 600. That is pretty, it, it's different. You know, if you can get over, if the noise doesn't bother you, which I'm, I'm real particular about noises and like tones of things, this bothers me quite a bit. Um, this sounds wonderful to me, but. Sounds like it's really working hard in there. <laughs> now, a lot of people, I also want to point this out, a lot of people think that the noise is gears grinding. It's not. 
The gear case is actually perfectly quiet on this one. It is the motor that's actually making all that noise. Now, on to the 7 quart 1.3 horsepower DC model. Stir. The DC motor sounds entirely different. This one is quieter on speed 10 than this one is on speed 1. It's, it's very interesting. Um, speed 2, 4. Once you hit speed 4, you kind of hear it start to really ramp up there. 6, 8, 10. I think it's pretty darn smooth. Back to speed one again. Um, DC model motor, DC motor models of KitchenAid, which are your seven quart pro line. The uh, KitchenAid Mini is also a DC motor setup. Your commercial eight quart KitchenAid is the same motor and setup as the pro line seven. You can actually put all the commercial, the commercial eight quart bowl, the attachments, everything will work fine on the pro set on the pro line seven as it will the commercial aid. It's the same setup electronically and motor-wise in this machine. Um, DC motor, AC motor, AC motor. Something else I wanted to point out. I love DC model motors, as the uh, models that use a DC motor, because they're quieter, smoother than the AC, the modern AC motor. But one easy way to tell, if you don't want to remember all of the actual models and model numbers, pretty surefire way is if the control switch itself, right here, is silver, it is a DC motor. If it's black, like these, it uses an AC motor. There are a few exceptions to this. I've seen some special edition artisan, bowl, uh, artisan tilt head mixers that have silver dials, but they are um, their AC motor, just like this one over here. But um, with the bowl lift mixers, if it's got a silver knob, you've got a 1 to 1.3 horsepower DC motor. And if it's a black control knob, it's the AC motor setup, which is noisier with these. So, as far as sound, it's definitely a winner here with the uh, DC motor. And as far as torque, too. The, uh, moving over here, the Proline 7, this is a refurbished one. A lot of these, one thing I was a little disappointed in, if you buy these new in the store, this little handle has like a silver knob on it, kind of like the Pro 600, but it's actually stainless steel. This one does not. So this one's kind of weird in that manner that they, they remove that knob for some reason, but it is refurbished. It was extremely, it was an extremely good deal. So I'm, I'm not complaining. Um, the differences between your Pro 600 and the Pro Line 7 quart. If you notice, both of these have the same, it's the same case, like the design, the, um, the actual tower that holds the mixer, everything's designed the same way, the bowl lift handles, everything. The main difference comes in the actual guts of the mixer, whereas this one has a separate AC motor and transmission with gears. The DC model, like the um, like this Proline 7 here in the commercial A court, uses an all-in-one. It's a motor transmission unit, and it's you don't really replace anything on the inside of it. There is an access cover up here to see the actual gears, but the, nothing inside is replaceable. If something goes out in this, you actually have to replace the entire motor, and that brings up another difference. If you look at the planetary assemblies, this one on the Pro 600 is smaller, and there is no little punch-out tab. On this one, you have a punch-out metal piece that you actually take kind of a chisel and punch it out of there so you can drop the assembly down if you need to service it, just like your older models have that little punch-out piece. So you can pop your drip ring off here and get into the gearbox from underneath. This is because that motor assembly has one little, one little roller that comes down and meets your thing, meets your uh, planetary right here to spin it, and then that's what holds it all in place. 
This one, in order to get that planetary off, you actually have to disassemble the gear case, take a, um, a C-clip out of it, and it drops down, and the entire thing is one piece. That's another difference about these. Um, on the front here, something else that I like about the uh, Proline 7 quart is these are stainless steel, at least I'm pretty sure. This little part right here is solid stainless steel. Like when I first took this out, I was like, God, this thing's heavy, because this is one solid piece. Unlike, the, um, unlike these, it's basically a plastic knob pushed onto a metal screw. So that was one little, you know, nice thing that I noticed about this model. And also your cover for your attachment hub is stainless steel versus kind of a brushed look on this one. But very heavy duty, although this one is going to give much more torque for bread dough. If you do cakes and cookies and you never do more than a double batch, this is fine. And again, the Pro 5 or the Pro Line KSM 5, you know, whatever model you have, this is also a good choice for anything. I wouldn't go, I would not do more than eight cups of flour in this one. My typical bread recipe is usually five and a half to six cups, and it does okay with that. But, and then that's two full size loaves of bread. But any more than that, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't try to do with either one of these. Now this one has a 16, pretty sure it's 16 cup flour capacity. If you're using white flour, uh, wheat flour lowers it to maybe 10 or 11 cups. But I can tell you this one definitely has more torque for um, bread or dough kneading and giant seven quart bowl to work with. When I, first, when I first got this out of the box and I saw this bowl, it is huge. <laughs> seven quarts is the largest you know kitchen aid that I have and I just I was like my gosh you could do anything with this bowl and the eight quart is even bigger I think with the eight quart it's the same width bowl but it's a little bit taller so I just I can't even imagine um, but yeah this one if you want to like triple or quadruple the recipe this is definitely the machine to use um, I wouldn't really do anything over a double recipe of cookies, um, you know, especially if it's a thick cookie dough like oatmeal or something like that. It will stress the gearbox in this model, and you can double your recipes with this one, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't overdo it just, just because of the capacity. You've got five quarts, smallest capacity of any of these. With the uh, Proline 7, another thing that I love is it comes with a much better quality 11 wire full stainless steel whip. Now you remember I talked about the whip on the older Hobart made KitchenAids being completely stainless steel. They did away with that for a long time and they used what you call burnished metal which reacts with dish detergent and it becomes powdery and flaky and nasty. What I like about the Proline 7 quart is this whip, this 11 wire whip. It's actually rectangular in shape which is different. But the entire thing is stainless steel, including your base here, which is, this thing is heavy. I mean, that's the first thing I noticed is like, wow, this thing weighs a lot compared to the uh, Pro 600. I mean, it's, it's dinky little whip with the burnished metal on the bottom. But um, yeah, that's another awesome thing about this. Basically, the more, the more wires you've got in this, the faster you're going to be able to do meringues, um, whipped cream, anything that involves incorporating air into a mixture. So that's another awesome thing. And the uh, two standard tools that the Proline comes with are nylon coated. And they're kind of like this taupey, taupey kind of color. And they're smooth to the touch. These can be put in the dishwasher, no problem. And it's a spiral style dough hook. And then this, this is the biggest one of the flat beaters I've ever seen. Like if you take a look at your original K5, huge difference in size. Just th this thing is massive. No wonder you can do so many cookies in this machine. But, and even without a spring on your little shaft here, this just slides right in and puts into place. A lot of people were upset when they started removing these springs and washers. Now they did this to make it easier to clean and it, it just, it really wasn't necessary. I have to be honest, I've never had a problem 
with having no spring there. Um, some people have, but I, I've personally never had a problem with it. It's not caused me any trouble. Um, but yeah, this, these are, these are your three most popular bowl lift uh, versions of the KitchenAid mixer. I will be honest, my favorite still today is the old K5. Um, if anybody used to watch Martha Stewart back in the late 80s and early 90s, she had the K5 and she even talked about it. And they're, they're just, they are so solid. That's, that's another thing I wanted to get to. Like, the way this is built, you see the size of these bolts that hold the actual motor head onto the stand? They're huge. You take one of these apart, they're little screws. And you have lots of attachments that kind of require bearing down of weight on the front of the machine. This, these two models, they give a little bit. If you have to put weight on there to do any kind of work with an attachment or whatever, this one does not give at all. <laughs> this is one solid piece of metal here, the entire thing. And these just have, you push down on them, they have a little bit of a give to them. They wiggle a little bit, even if they're properly tightened. So that's, that's another one of my preferences, just all around solid, you know, the, uh, I just think they were manufactured a little bit heavier back then. Um, but like I said, um, you know, you can still purchase the equivalent modern version of this, which is the Pro 500. They still make the Pro 600 in lots and lots of different colors, so it's available too. Most of them have a stainless steel bowl. This one is a Pro 600 Deluxe, so it came with the uh, glass bowl and the appropriate items for the glass bowl. And the 7 quart, I usually only see with the stainless steel. Now, if you like the glass bowl and you love the 7 quart mixer with its DC motor and higher torque and more power, you can actually put the 6 quart bowl on the 7 quart machine if you use its specific attachments. So, 7 quart mixer also has a much thicker cord on it too, um, which is kind of weird because the wattage is not much different from this one. It's a different motor setup, different usage but anyway um yeah any questions just i've i've you know had every one of these apart to either look at it or service it or fix it in one way or fashion so any questions on how these work or you know how you can do this or that just ask me in the comments below um first time making a video like this it's <laughs> kind of weird but um I've, I've really enjoyed collecting these and kind of refurbishing them. I've got several more I plan on making videos of. So, yeah, just um, comment, like, anything like that, and whatever, you know, YouTube usually does. <laughs> and uh, ask me anything you'd like in comments. So, I'm Zach. These are KitchenAid Bowl Lift Mixers, the KSM-5 from the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Pro 600, this is probably about a 2015, 2014 model. And then your Pro Line 7 quarter KSM 7581. And, uh, yep, yep. KSM 26 on this one with a bunch of numbers and letters after it, depending upon your color and several other things like that. But yeah, anything you want me to do or whatever, just leave it in a comment. Thank you.